Good day, Father Matt Williams here in my parked car. I hope you're well. And special um, prayers today for our new Holy Father, Pope Francis. How wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for such a beautiful holy man. Some of these images um, of, of his ministry, one particular one was so stunning, was him kneeling down, washing the feet and kissing the feet of a child in a wheelchair with, with severe disabilities. So beautiful. What a humble, beautiful man. We're so blessed. We're so blessed. we got to pray. Interestingly enough, you know what was the very first thing he did today? So today's his first day as Pope. You know what was the very first thing he did? He went to the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore, St. Mary Major, and he offered his pontificate to the Blessed Mother. First thing he did, he goes and he prays to the Blessed Mother, to the, the major Marian Basilica in, uh, in Rome, and offers... Um, one of the oldest churches in, in, in the one of the oldest basilicas in the history of the church um, has really ancient roots. The, its building has been built up over the years and torn down, but its roots are are very old. And he dedicates his, his pontificate to Mary. What a beautiful example! And that it confirms the very thing that we're doing as we embark on this total consecration to Jesus through Mary, following the example of Saint Louis de Montfort. It's such a, it's such a great confirmation. And Pope Benedict. Uh, did the same John Paul II. They give us this wonderful example of the great important role that our Blessed Mother Mary plays in our individual lives. Also, I think of so many priests. The first thing that they do when they are consecrated a priest is they, they consecrate their priesthood to Mary. They place it in her hands, the best of hands. So, we're, we're, we're on a very good thing here. We're, we're, we are following what the Holy Spirit is inspiring us to do in these days, to have a radical relationship, trust, consecration to our Blessed Mother Mary because she's what? The spouse of the Holy Spirit. She is the spouse of the Holy Spirit. So St. Louis, we're reading today from True Devotion and St. Louis today talks about that like the goal of the Christian life, as I've said every day almost, is that we're called to be saints. We're called to live out the fullness of our baptism, our baptismal promises to be completely to conformed to Jesus Christ. Now St. Louis says that um, what we need to do is we need to find what are the devotions that are going to help us to achieve our goal, that is being most conformed to Jesus Christ. And he says, you know, as we look at all the different devotions, we want to find out also who, who is the, who's the one that's leading these devotions or how are they, how are they, where are they guiding us? And he says, you know, Mother Mary... Um, was the most perfect disciple. I've said this before, right? She was the most perfect disciple. So it would make sense. She was the most conformed to Jesus. So it makes it would make sense that devotions to her, who was the most conformed, should be of the highest order because she will help us in turn to be conformed to her son. If Mary's the greatest disciple that's ever lived, we need to follow in her mold. We need to entrust ourselves to her, to be formed by her, to learn from her. So again, another in, in, another um, way of saying why Mary is so important for the Christian disciple to become the saint that God has called them to be. Mary is the greatest teacher. She's our advocate, our holy, blessed mother. We talked the past few days about this word of holy slavery. And remember how I said, you know, we probably wouldn't use that word in our modern day, but, but what St. Louis is getting at is, is that you know, that we would be long, that we would belong completely to Mary, that we would be entirely subject to our Blessed Mother, we'd be wholly hers, that we'd be completely hers, and that everything that we have, and he says this more in the readings today, that everything of who we are, body, soul, spirit, everything of what we have, our, our material goods, our spiritual goods, any good that we do, everything, he's saying we need to consecrate it to our Blessed Mother Mary to entrust it all to her and to have her in turn guide us and use it, dispose of it, if you will, according to God's holy will. That because she knows in a far greater way than I, because she's the spouse of the Holy Spirit, what the needs are around us and throughout the entire world, the universal church. And that when we entrust all these things, we're saying, Mother Mary, we're part of your army. We're, we're your children. We're your sons and daughters. We want to be about the mission of what God wants us to do. And we want to follow your orders because you are the spouse of the Holy Spirit. You are our dear Blessed Mother Mary. You've been given to us by Jesus. We entrust all these things. Please guide us and show us. And it's, giving, it's helping us to have this radical detachment from the things of this world. Now, I talked yesterday specifically about when we give Mother Mary everything, our, our prayers and our sacrifices, our merits, our joys and our sorrows. There's a... 
uh, I, I'm, I'm very familiar with the story. You, just yesterday, someone was going through a really hard time, went through an adverse period yesterday. Um, and you could say like the wind was taken out of their sails, like somebody punched them in the gut, really hard blow, really devastated. And what did they do? They remembered the consecration and how we give everything to Mary. And that person took that suffering and that frustration and pain, whatever they're going with, and they offered it to Mary, completely offered it to Mary and said, Mother Mary, I give you all of this. Dispose of it according to God's will. Use this for something. So instead of just having a pity party and being stuck in their muck, that rhymes, stuck in your muck, they offered it to Mary, who in turn will dispose of it according to God's holy will. So that everything we do, even the sufferings that we endure, we can offer them to Mary, who then, according to God's will, will dispose of it accordingly. And she makes them even more beautiful because she unites them with her merits and her prayers as well. Lastly, um, St. Louis talks about how we want to be doing things through Mary and in Mary. Um, through Mary and in Mary. So it's just this beautiful reality that we become one with our Blessed Mother Mary through this consecration, doing things through her and with her, knowing that she is the spouse of the Holy Spirit and that uniting ourselves with her, that she will lead us on the path to the Father, to her beloved Son, that she will help us to be conformed to be another Christ in this world. So let's continue on, folks. Let's pray for our Holy Father. Following his example, we're on a good track. Don't give up. If you've fallen short, today's a new day. Begin again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.